Hey guys, how are you doing? I um, just wanted to give you a little bit of an intro right now uh, for an interview I did uh, about last week with my Sifu, Stephen Hua of Classical Tai Chi Wu Style. In this interview, it's more like uh, getting to know Sifu a little bit, his views on Tai Chi, his history with Tai Chi, how he started. Uh, at the beginning of the interview, we had some connect connectivity issues with the internet, so it was kind of uh, uh, blotchy, or or should I say, a lots of cuts. So we, uh, so I actually went and took it out. So where we're starting on the interview now is uh, where I ask him how he got into Tai Chi. Previously, just before that, um, we were discussing how old he was when he got into Tai Chi, which would have been about 40 years old, and how old he is now, which is 89. So that's a whole 50 years of practice right there. So hope you enjoyed the interview. Let's get into it, guys. How, how did you get started with Tai Chi? How did that, how did that come about? Well, uh, well, you see, I play tennis at uh, 40 years old. I've started to feel my health going down, the joints, you know, stamina, everything started going down. So I'm looking for something to do to improve my health. So my teacher just happened to visit his daughter in Rochester, New York. And um, he also opened some class in the night. So I heard about, it. I know his daughter. So I come participating in his class. Uh, he was from that time from Hong Kong. He just visiting his daughter in Rochester, New York. So. I started with him because he has those classes. And I really attracted by the small circle Taiji, the square form when he taught. I'm really surprised by the scientific way it's constructed. You know, people Mostly thinking about the Tai Chi is uh, kind of philosophical, mystical, and you know, um, there's no real explanation of what they do. But I can see in the square form clearly the purpose of doing it. It's very scientific. Um, in fact, I'm thinking even nowadays people are going to have trouble to come up with that with all the scientific knowledge to come up with Taji. Because one of the things which really impresses me is any movie design has to satisfy two criteria. One is martial art application, the other is health. You know, when you design a system, a complex system, which you have to satisfy two criteria simultaneous, it's not easy. You know, usually you are aiming toward one criteria, but they have to satisfy two criteria simultaneous. And their knowledge about human joints and health and martial art is just incredible they really pay attention to your joints and in the square form really shows up you know the never twist the ankle never twist the knee you know you're never twisting the knee because now they People are supposed to have a lot of good knowledge about uh, joints and so forth, but they pay no attention in twisting the knee and twisting the ankle. Um, it just, uh, you know, one story, I taught Taiji 
many years in a karate school mm -hmm. in, in, in Rochester, the karate school. And uh, the karate, as most martial arts, they push off with the foot twisted. I think I know what you mean, Sufu. Uh, you mean more like uh, like this? More like twist, yes, push off push, the foot push like that? Off with the foot like this. Right. Okay, okay, okay. Right. So, and recently, as I call from the head trainer at the school, because, you know, she and I are, you know, good friends. She said, we have to change that foot, not turning outward, parallel, because they all have ankle problems. And uh, so they have, have, they consult a real high end, you know, ninth degree karate teacher from Okinawa. Oh, wow. Uh, I think called the Sensei Neshimi. Neshimi. I think you can find him on the internet. Neshimi said, you know, we have this ankle problem. And um, Sensei Neshimi said, why do you twist your ankle like this? If you push off, you're going to hurt your ankle. Parallel, two feet parallel push off. So she called me and said, we, I finally realized what you said about two feet parallel, not the pushing with a twist of the ankle. And uh, so, but she in Taiji, all these kind of details, the founding the masters, they all incorporated into their form, not twisting the ankle. Uh, so, so all the form you move, you know, we don't use twist the ankle, it's a pair of feet. Mm -hmm. So, and the, the whole leg is uh, in one piece, you never twist the leg so that your knee could be in trouble. So all these kind of details build into the Taiji form. And it is very obvious in the square form. You can start, you, when you learn the square form, you start to can guess the thinking of these masters when they design the form. You see, in the round form, it's harder to really decipher their thinking as much as the square form. You can really, that's why I wrote a book, you know, 40 years, um, treasure hunting. It's really in the square form. You can start guessing what they are thinking. And it's so surprisingly scientific. No bullshit. Okay. Everything explained. You know, not like you know, heaven and earth, you know, this is philosophy or anything. No. Everything is on solid scientific ground, they designed the square form. But you see, which is not surprising. The reason is when they designed the Taiji form three, four hundred years ago, don't know exact time, and we don't know who, at that time, Learning Taiji is like learning any martial art. Mm -hmm. Life and death. It's not a plaything, okay? It's your career for your future, but the career is full of danger. You have to, you know, you know people knock on the door, coming in, want to challenge you. So you are a master, are challenging you, you know? So, Everything is very real. You have to do the real thing, not the hand waving kind of things. You know, it has to be there. But the trouble is this kind of atmosphere 
is lost when the gun becomes popular. So now martial art have no real kind of use. And um, people start doing every which way, you know, they're kind of free. They, they can do anything. They can do dance or, you know, dance kind of movement and uh, anything is free. But the, the square form in the small circle still follow that the tradition. No nonsense. Every move has to have a reason and, you know, protect you. And it's, the thing is, uh, when I find that many of the movement, if you protect your joints, that movement is also more effective. You know, I think I may explain. When in the square form, if we have a takedown move, the whole half body moves, including you turning the foot, right? The whole okay. half body moves. In other words, the whole half body, including the foot, turning. You don't leave your foot back and you take it down. So when you say in this way, you take down somebody, if you leave this foot back, you are twisting your leg, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you cool. your ankle. So remember, in our move is like this: this foot come, this side is one piece, and follow foot, knee follow elbow. So yes, follow. that's right. That's right. Right. Okay. Okay, I understand. I understand. Uh, the the yin yang line is right here in the body, Sifu. Right? Body, right. Okay. So hand to follow the foot, elbow follow the knee, right? And uh, okay, I... so when you do that, you protect your knee, so you don't twist your knee. In addition, it's more has more force. Because if your foot left behind, not to go with your elbow, your upper body, then the pull back of your body. You see, it restrains you from using the full force forward because the foot is left behind. If your foot is follow the body, your full half body force can go with it. If your foot to go with the hand, rather than left behind. So, so in other words, what they do to improve the health at the same time also improve martial art application. So, see if I do. I have to ask though. Um, which one is first? They, they. Um, it was martial arts application, which was the intention, first intention, and then the health came after that. Would you say? Simultaneous. Simultaneous. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because if you don't take care of your say joints, there's no point to learn martial art because after twenty years you'll be crippled. Right? Yeah, you, your joints will be in trouble. So just like my karate teacher, <laughs> they, they find that they cannot do it like that anymore. The teachers, the, the ankle get weakened. They can't push forward anymore. So, so really it's inseparable in a way, you know. Health and uh, martial art application, the power, so forth. Um, so um, I'm very much impressed with uh, 
with what they could、um, design something like this. I too, Sifu. I'm very impressed.、Um, I mean, that's and and it's also I'm you know looking at you as 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 proof. I can definitely see it as well because <laughs> it's、um, like. Okay, I've been I've been studying Tai Chi for I'd say a little bit over thirteen years now, and、uh, I've been studying with you for less than two months. And the things that you have taught me in just less than two months, right? I have never been taught in the almost thirteen years prior. Right. Right. Like like I've never been taught anything about a yin yang line. Going down the middle of the body, or、oh, yeah, or, or, yeah, or, right. You know, these are all these are all to me. They seem like secrets. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? It seems like secrets. My my teachers, my previous teachers, just didn't want to you know bestow upon me.、Uh, it's kind of like that's kind of like how I feel right now about that. But you know, in, in terms of benefits, though, if I do have to ask you, right? Well, we're 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 talking about benefits of the practice of Aikido, so like the physical benefits, the health benefits, and so on, and how they're be how they are、uh, simultaneous with the、uh, martial arts application. Right? Can I ask what 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 benefits have you personally reaped from your practice from your fifty? Okay, okay. The first thing is、um, when I at forty years old. I already have low back trouble. I can't get up from the bed in the morning. I have to roll off my bed and push on the bed to stand up to hurt my low back so much. Tennis is, you know, if you don't do it right, it's very damaging. And in few months, my low back trouble is gone.、Wow. And Yeah, and it's not just me. Many of my students,、um, in fact,、um, my student is taking over my class at the karate school right now.、Mm -hmm. So when I left ten years ago from Rochester, she take over my class, the teaching, like you take over the class. So she was the same way. She has back trouble. And she come to the class immediately. The back improves.、Mm -hmm. Remember the walking, stretch the spine, stretch the spine. That's the first thing you want. Stretch the spine so that you no longer compress on the disc on the spine. So the disc can gradually go back to the old position. And、uh, and you also you are moving with a stretching, so the disc gradually go back to the old position. That's why I, I guess that's the reason. You know, just few months, my low back problem is gone. I think the forward stretch, leaning. You know, stretch the spine, and also using the. Abdominal muscle to support the upper body weight, so the upper body weight is not sitting on the spine, the low back spine. So you relieve the spine, the responsibility of supporting your upper body weight. It's your stomach muscle not supporting your upper body weight or any kind of movement. So. Things like that, immediate, very immediate. Those improvement are very immediate. But I think that the long term improvement is your movement. You kind of massage your internal organ. You probably can feel it now, right? Your 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 tummy movement is a massage. You you know it goes deep. Because those movement are your inside the muscle is moving in in your tummy, so the massage action is very prominent into all your organs, into your in your abdominal cavity, all these organs. Okay, and now we're 
now we're talking about internal discipline, right? right. So yeah, E D internal discipline. Yes. Okay. You see, so, I like the I, I like the way how you I, I like the way how you put um you 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 coined Tai Chi at right? the back of at the back of your shirt, Sifu, on your on your logo. Yeah. You said how you said Tai Chi, the art of internal movement. Yes. And I, I find I find that to be so true now. Whereas probably say two months ago, I'd, I'd, I'd look at the shirt and be like, I, 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 didn't, I wouldn't understand as I understand it now. Yeah. So, so could you explain a little bit more about internal discipline, Sipu? The internal discipline is, uh, from martial art viewpoint, you have to use your most powerful muscle in your body for a movement. And the most powerful body in your movement is the abdominal muscle and the back muscle. Those are the big power. Yeah, it's not your arm or anything. Okay? Arm cannot compare to that. And also the arm movement, the muscle is a so-called a linear movement. It's a stretch and contraction. So the direction is limited, okay? So, you, you, for example, your arm really cannot make it a turn very powerful because you do, don't have muscle designed for the turning the arm, you know, turning the arm. But the abdomen plus the back has many direction movement muscle in it. It's complex. The abdominal muscle you thinking normally thinking about the six pack is just only one part of the muscle, but there's a side for your turning. And so all direction, you can use the power. So it's very versatile. If you know using the abdominal muscle, very versatile in many directions and twists and counters, much more than the you know, the linear muscle of arm, so forth. So, so the entire design is how to use your most powerful muscle in the body effectively. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, sorry, yeah, that's, go ahead, go ahead. Huh? Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. I don't want to cut you, Stephen, sorry. So, but to utilize the, the internal muscle effectively, remember I explained to you the, the problem with springs, strong yes, spring and weak spring? Yes, you do. Right? I remember. If you have a weak spring and a strong spring stacked together. Okay, two springs stacked together. Then all you feel is the weak spring, not the strong spring anymore, right? You can imagine when you push on it, it's the weak spring will yield. The, the strong spring just move a little bit. But the yield is mostly the weak spring. So what you feel is the weak spring. So the design of the form in one way is you have to make the weak spring into a solid piece. It's no longer a spring. So, so if you have a, you know, the weak spring here, weak spring, if they become, say, raw, it's not stretchable, then you can feel everything is a strong spring because the weak spring doesn't work anymore. So, so our push movement from the upper body, you see there's three spring working. The push movement, one is if you move your arm, that's one weak spring. Then if you move a shoulder, that's a little stronger, but then still weak. 
but the strong spring is here to here. So here you have a three spring stack on each other. This weak spring and this weak spring, then the strong spring, the back, the abdomen. Mm. Okay. Three springs stack on each other, right? So they designed the form so that all the weak spring doesn't move. So this move, the weak spring doesn't move. So here I don't move. Here I don't move. I'm over here. So the design in the form, they make the weak spring not move. Most of the weak spring are external body. So that becomes, you do everything is moving internal. The external part shouldn't move and just let the strong spring move. So then your power comes out. So that's why every Taiji move, every single move, you have to separate the body into yin and yang. Yin is this weak spring or the base of the spring, because any spring has to have a base, right? You, you have to have a base, then you can move a spring. Spring has attached to a base. So the base is also yin. Spring is yang moving. The base is yin. And all this weak spring has to be yin, not moving. Only the strong spring is yang, is moving. So the design is a little bit complicated to set up the yin and yang, not moving certain parts of the body and only moving the strong part of the body to get the most power. Hmm. But you see, it, to do this system, you see, it's very involved. The logic is very complex. <coughs> You see, when you, any martial art, you're using force. There are two force available to you. One is whole body rushing. It's the momentum. You know, your whole body, whole body moves forward. That's the momentum. You know, in external martial art, you use quite a bit. You push whole right. body forward. Okay. Right? You use that kind of boxing also, you know, whole body forward. Well, the whole body forward, you hope, yeah, you're, you're using the, the weight of your body forward as your force. Right? You sometimes, in external martial art, you use that. The whole body weight on the opponent, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whole body rushing forward. So there's two force. One is the momentum of the body with your body weight, that force. The other is the muscle elastic force which, you know, abdomen force is the same way. You use a muscle elastic force. So only, there's only two force for you to use, okay? Now, Tai Chi, avoid use the momentum force, the body momentum force. They avoid that. In the movement, they avoid using body momentum, right? The reason is Taiji is designed to take advantage of opponent's momentum and throw them off balance. That's what we designed for. You know, you come at me, I yield, let you come in, 
but I use your momentum and throw you. That's the Taiji basic martial art application is try to use your momentum to destabilize you. So if that's the purpose, because we are defensive art, we don't rush people. You, know? you stand there, I don't rush you, right? So I stay here, wait. If you rush me, I use your momentum and throw you. We are defensive art, basically. So we don't use the momentum force, but we do use the elastic force. That's why the spring action is very important to us, because that's all we use is the muscle spring force. Spring, even abdomen, we also use the muscle in the abdomen turning that kind of force. So, so, so the design, everything is very tight because we are not a attacking martial art. We defensive martial art, wait for you to come. So we can design no momentum in our movement, in our own moment, movement, because we take advantage of other people's momentum. So we don't want to use momentum in our movement. Only use the muscle spring action, you know, the bouncing spring action. So that's why we can design the movement always have yin and yang. If you want Russian people, sometimes your whole body rushing forward, there's no yin or yang. Because the whole body is rushing, right? Mm -hmm. There's no yang, there's no yin. Nothing's still, everything is moving when you're rushing people, the whole body. Yeah. You see, see all this logic tying together? I do. Yeah, I mean, I you know, <laughs> it, it's a front, there, there is an overall logic and the internal logic, layer by layer, this logic all tied together. So design something like this is, you know, is so incredible, scientific. Okay. All these logics and also knowing the body in great detail, understanding the body in great detail and utilize the understanding in construct this martial art, so-called Taiji. So it's a very scientifically constructed, the whole thing, and very complex in that the logic is all tying together. You, you, you know, really you cannot change anything because in, if you change something, the logic is going to crumble, you know. So, so when I just first learning, I just gradually getting the, the feel. There's so much scientific insight and the scientific construction of the art. So certainly a lot of them, I'm gradually discovering even more and more. In the beginning, I just senses this is a very scientifically designed martial art. But in the, you know, 40 years, 30 years so that practicing and gradually understand, and I find more and more this scientific, you know, such a scientific thinking behind everything. Okay, okay. so Sifu, question. With all of these, all, all, all of these um, details, right? The, all the scientific details uh, and all of these, all, you can basically call them layers, and they're all layered on top of each other for yeah, yeah. simultaneous at the same time, right? So it's taken you well, for the for the month, for the good part fifty years to get to the point of where you are with your practice, right, Shifu? So my question, so I have a question for you now. 
uh, what would you like to see from younger generations, right? Um, as they get as 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 they get to this point of getting the same type of knowledge, but because really, no one's really teaching this. If right? no no, is it? It's, it's possible because they don't know it. Probably right. They were never taught it. So would you? like to see the younger generations learn this definitely definitely i mean that's the reason i put you know all these online courses and the youtube videos you know to, to explain in the youtube video i can only explain one aspect one small aspect but if you see many of these small aspects start putting together with my cause then you can see the whole thing you can see the whole thing that's why i put this out um on the on the line now um you know this is this is a golden opportunity for our generation we can do this you see the poor old teachers they don't have that kind of technology help them so they can only teach by themselves which is extremely time consuming you know every student you have to go through the same routine teach all the stuff it's, it's right i mean i understand <laughs> i do I understand. Yeah, understand that so so this is a golden opportunity presented to us that we can put all the details together so everyone can see it, you know. It doesn't have to become to me. That's why all time really good students have to stay with the teacher, live in their household day and the night. Otherwise, if you are just a student visiting teacher two, three times a week, you will never learn this kind of details. I agree. <laughs> and uh, if they don't teach you the small circle or the square form to these kind of students. They only teach to the student who kind of live with them night and day. That's yeah. why, that's that why kind of too few people learn about it. Very good. I was just about to ask you that, Sifu. See, all the details that you're telling me about, Sifu, this is only um, from small circle Taiji. Uh, you're not going to get it from anywhere else. Yeah. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, large frame or mid frame, but small frame is where you're going to get these details, right? Yeah. The reason, yeah, is... They teach ordinary students in the old time. You see the availability of the time. Okay. If you are visiting the uh, teacher three, four times a week, time is not enough to teach the square form and the small circle, everything. So the bigger circle, just watch my movement. That's all they can do. One set, you know, watch my movement. That's all they can do. I mean, in fact, in the old time, the so-called ordinary student, they don't show them square form or small circle. They don't show them because they're going to get confused with what you're talking about. Because they don't only have that so limited time with the teacher. You just teach them one set of moments. That's it. One set of moments. Larger frame. One set of moment. So most people now just know one set of moment, larger circle. That's it. No details. You know, you cannot give all the details. You see how many YouTube video I have. It each attack attack one little detail, but you know so many YouTube videos didn't still I don't think 
cover the whole field. So the amount of information embedded in Taiji is so vast. So if you want to learn everything in the old time, it's very difficult. You have to live with the teacher. And my teacher lived with Wu Jianqing three years. They live in a one house and really concentrate the night and day practice. That's why he learned. And that's why many of Wu Jianqing's students, including their own children, have not learned all the details all of the small circles because the the difference is normally my teacher uh, uh, Wu Jianqing has so many students and as famous people that time you know those Chinese generals or they all want to have a title that I'm student of Wu Jianqing. So they all visit. So he is so busy, except, so he doesn't have time to really teach even their own children that amount of details because he has visitors all the time in Shanghai. And, uh, but when he was with my teacher, he was in Hong Kong to escaping Japanese that time. So he's a refugee with my teacher. So he lived, he doesn't have a place to live. Okay, so he lived with my teacher. And he doesn't have that many in Hong Kong. He is not that well known as in Shanghai or something because People know that. So in Hong Kong, he doesn't have, have that, that busy schedule. So two of them could concentrate on practice. So it's really a chance because of the Japanese invasion, the war in Shanghai. So he left Shanghai to take a refugee in Hong Kong so he can meet my teacher before my teacher doesn't know Wu Jianqing, you know. So if it's not because of escape the war, they will never meet. So you know, all these are chances. Things are really chances. You know, if they two didn't meet because of the war and because they can practice together night and day in my teacher's house for three years. I would never know this. Yeah. Everything um, is. That's like having super having. Uh, that's it's pretty much like how I have it, how I have it with you, Sifu. Like how I have your uh, your uh, <laughs> your classical Tai Chi videos. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I can at two o'clock in the morning if I can't sleep, I can go and watch you. I have you right there in my computer. Yeah, like, right. I, uh, wow, that's cool. That would, that would be so cool. <laughs> yeah. So we we are at a golden opportunity. We can um, pass this on through most uh, this kind of you know medium, the video and so forth internet so that, that's our golden opportunity to really pass this on so also, i'm also thinking sifu how hard it must have been for you because i have to really thank you first and foremost sifu, because you are who made it possible for it to be an easier route for me to learn whereas your te you had your teacher who was always traveling from Hong Kong, between Hong Kong and the United yeah. States. Yeah, and that, yeah. that was, and it's only that time when you're able to see him, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, you made it easier for me to be with my Sifu than it was for you to be with your Sifu. Thank you. Yeah, now you can, you, you can review the material every day, anytime you want. 
That's great. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I'm trying to use the golden opportunity offered to us with video so forth. Um, right now, I'm more or less finished a lot of the material in the uh, English speaking world. So now I'm in, in China now. I'm using the same way, okay? Online course and uh, uh, Douyin, which is like their TikTok, using the short video piece by piece, you know, one small segment, try to convince them there is something really excellent. And I started getting quite a few students in China now. So the, the, so, the small circle is even lost over there as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I know now that I first go over, I didn't know what their reaction would be to my material, right? About six months ago, I started going over. So I'm kind of curious what they feel the reaction were. And I find it's very welcome. It's a refreshing material to them. They haven't seen that before too. Same thing as US, not that much different. Not that much different. Yeah. Sifu, you're, yeah, you're originally from China, right, Sifu? Originally, yes. Originally, okay. Yes, okay, okay. yeah. I, I left mainland China before the communists come take over uh, when I was, I think, uh, 14, 15 years old. I went to Taiwan for high school. I went to Taiwan. Taiwan, you know, communist China, never been, is not by communist China. So I kind of escaped communist China, go to Taiwan for high school. Then I left the Taiwan after uh, graduation from university. Okay, nice. So I arrived U.S. 1957. <laughs> Quite old. <laughs> you came here, came here for school, Sifu, right? <laughs> huh? You came here for school? Yeah, I come to Georgia Tech for graduate school. I study engineering. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool, that's cool, that's good. And it's it's funny how fate just brought you over here and then you and then you met your Shifu and you oh, your yes. Yeah. All these are chances, really. You know. And also meet the students also chances. You know, meet you. You know, you're a good student. It's by chance that we met. You know, everything is kind of chance, I have to say. Well, like everything else in the life is chances, you know. It's always what you what you do with that with those chances, right? Yes, right. I try to brought those chances in China, for example, kind of reproduce what I have done in US, you know, online school and promote on the kind of YouTube video kind of thing, reproduce that in China. And my feedback is very, very good. And even though I know what I said sometimes, is against what they are practicing, okay? <laughs> like uh, turn the hip, when they move, turn the upper body, they turn the hip with it. I said, no, you cannot turn the hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they get it. They never attack me for that. They really get it. And, but I understand you know, their knowledge of the square form and the, uh, Small circle is just as bad as in the US. Oh, it's not as bad. Okay. Just as bad. Okay. Yeah. And that's because nobody's teaching it. Nobody's teaching it. Nobody's teaching it. Okay. So, so really, you have more, uh, you'd have 
more people who know more of the large frame who yeah, tend correct. to know they have, know the small frame. Yeah, yeah. In the Canada, the same way. Same way. Okay, well. <laughs> Well, we have to educate them. Well, don't worry, Sifu. I'll, I'll, I will help you educate them. <laughs> yes. We, you know, for the future, we need a, you and this, you know, to, to really propagate this art forward. It's a really a wonderful art. And if it doesn't propagate in the, to the future, it's a pity, you know, if it's a loss. You know, uh, from our last, from our last uh, class, if you, I remember you had, uh, we had, I had asked you if you could elaborate on how does this, uh, how does internal discipline or, um, help to propagate health? How does it, how does it help, help your health? Right? And I remember yeah. you had, you had, had, you had mentioned that it uh, helps to stimulate the production of lymph fluid yeah you know like because the the, the your movement is concentrated in the back and abdominal cavity right yes. back and abdominal cavity and normal people don't move the abdo abdominal cavity that much but the, our movement in the abdominal cavity penetrate very deep because you are using the inside abdominal cavities muscle to do all the work, right? So if you really like you're massaging the abdominal cavity constantly. If you play the form from beginning to end, you're massaging your abdominal cavity all the time. So, so in your massage action, you promote blood flow in the, in the abdominal cavity and lymphatic fluid flow. The lymph, you know, has a function of, well, part of the function is, I think, um, taping, taking up the waste from, from your organs and so forth. And the lymph fluid transfer the waste into the liver, uh, kidney, so forth, to get rid of the waste. So that is the system. The lymph system is very important. You know, a lot of the cancer problem, remember, is also the lymph nodes and that kind of thing. Lymph has no organ to help it to push the lymph fluid, the, the fluid, flow into the kidney to get rid of the waste. Then your blood still have a heart to pump circulating the blood. But the lymph doesn't have an organ like heart to pump it. It's your movement to push it around. So, so your internal movement really help the lymphatic fluid in your abdomen that are, part of body to move, to get rid of the waste. And also, I think people's organ, they regenerate, okay? The cell die and the cell, new cell grow, regenerates. The regeneration rate changes with your age. When you're young, the cell regenerates fast. So your organ, you know, rebuild itself very quickly. But when you're getting older, the regenerate rates start slowing down. But this kind of stimulation, movement stimulation, stimulates these organs to keep their regeneration rate keep, you know, at a younger rate, age rate. So you keep young by doing that. If your regeneration rate is the same as your younger age, you will behave younger. The regeneration. 
your whole body regeneration, you becomes younger. In you know, old people, the regeneration slows down, so it looks old and everything is old. So, so the stimulation, you know, the, the abdomen cavity has so much important organ stuff in it. You need to stimulate everything in it uh, to keep you young. I think that's why one reason, you know, I can, you know, stay kind of young, even though I'm just one year from 90 now. <laughs> See, for I never, I never take it for a day over 70. Never a day over that. <laughs> I, to, I, I told you that from the first day I met you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, when you told me at age six, well, I couldn't believe it. That's why, you know, that's one of the reasons why at the beginning of the interview, I asked your age because you see, like most people, your age six, you're not going to find them with all the, fa all your faculties like you, right? You're, <laughs> to me, you are, you, you are amazing. Right? Because I, because I literally, I have classes in some nursing homes. Right. So I, right. Have, I, I have, I have, I have, stu I have students who are who are like your age, Sifu, right? And they cannot move. Some of them yeah. can't even lift their arm. Like, yeah. And so when I look at you, Sifu, I'm like, th th you are how I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I Definitely. really I attribute. I can do all these things really because of the Tai Chi, you know, because of the Tai Chi. Otherwise, I'll be just like one of you said, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. You also have you also have experience in other martial arts too, Sifu, like karate too, right? You said. No, I really didn't practice karate because, oh. yeah, um, I see a lot of the problem, so I don't want to practice it. For example, you know, um, we have to avoid called use intentional force. So in the karate, the kata, you know, you practice the karate kata, you know, the kata. Kata is like a form, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kata is like a form. So you practice the kata, you do this. So what you do, you are intentionally strengthening your muscle. Tai Chi, you don't intentionally strengthen your muscle. You don't intentional. You just, yeah, you, you, you don't intentionally strengthen your muscle because the tenseness we have to avoid the so-called tenseness and the, the intentional stretched muscle, you cause the tenseness in the muscle. Once you do the tenseness of the muscle, the power transmission from the body, the core, the back, have to go through. You see, you can do this intentional strengthening. If you are just using arm muscle, because the power is right there in the arm. But for us, it's different. Our power comes from the abdominal and the back, have to transmit through this. So when the transmission process, you cannot tense up the muscle. You tense up the muscle, you block the energy from the abdominal and the back. Because you, you, this is a solid muscle here that the transmission can come through very well. So, so the Tai Chi, you know, you talk about the, a word that they use, song, song means loose, uh, not tense, right? The reason is you want to keep the muscle ability to transmit the power from the internal core, then the muscle cannot be tense for no reason. I mean, when you are transmitting the power through, the muscle tense up 
Okay, but that's for the transmission reason. But this is not doing anything. I, I just intentional tense for no reason at all. You have to avoid. You have to avoid. When you are transmitting the internal power, internal energy through, that moment you tense up. But it has to start, it's like uh, a whip, a whip, it can transmit the power because it's flexible, right? Right. The whip. If it's a solid stick, you don't transmit that way, you know. You can't transmit like a wave, like a wave, a power wave coming through. So your arm has to be like a whip, can transmit a power wave. Okay, you know, if you use your arm like this, like a stick, hard stick, that's one thing. But if you want to transmit a power through the back and abdomen like a wave, then you have to be flexible. Same thing. So that's why sometimes are using the fighting on you. It's like a very short burst, boom, right? It's like a wave hitting you, like a whip hitting you. That's exactly like a whip, a wave through the whip. So I don't want to practice you know, karate mainly because I don't want to intentionally tense up my muscle for no reason just intentionally yeah i remember you mentioning also sifu uh when you have when you have that intentional tension does that force come back to you yes if you keep if you keep it tense and it could do well no it is you know, that's the momentum problem okay oh momentum okay okay yeah you and then you have to stop the moment because there is a mass. Mass per times velocity is the momentum of this move. Mass times velocity. Now, at the end, you have to stop this momentum. You have to stop it, right? There's a lot of momentum here, you just stop. So every time you stop, is using the tendon here to pull it back, stop it. Oh, okay, okay. So it hurts the tendon, ligament in the shoulder joint. And in the karate school, there are some very, they are, you know, top students. They earn a lot of the prize in competition, like playing kata. And when you do the kata, you get you are trying to get high points. The moment has to be very crisp. In which, you know, you cannot stop slowly. You want boom, stop right away. The more you crisp like this, you get more points in your card competition, right? So, so the more crisp, the more joints. Uh, the tendon and ligament here get damaged. And I see some of the young, promising karate student, you know, 20 some years old, 23, 24, they have to have shoulder operation to replace, to, you know, repair the tendon and ligament. Mm -hmm. and that's the reason, you know. Yeah. So, so I just said the Taiji has incorporated all little details of what of, uh, will affect your health into it. Okay. So Sifu, Taiji, Taiji was the only martial art you've ever studied? Yes. Okay. No, no I haven't seen any others, right? No. Okay. No, so no, no karate, no taekwondo at all. Yeah. yeah, but I, you know, kind of in the karate school, so I, and many of my students are 
also learning karate on the, on the, on the you know, we have two, they're mainly a karate school, so we have a Taji class in it. Okay. So some of my students come from the karate, you know. So I learned that from them, you know, how the karate is, yeah. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff. Well, Shifu, I want to thank you very much for your time. And, and, oh, and, it's you know, enjoyable to talk house. to you anytime. It, it is always a great time. It's always a great time talking to you, Sifu. I'm picking some knowledge out of your brain. You know, because <laughs> that, oh, the Lord knows there's a lot more information that I could try and pick out. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but, well, we don't have that much time. And hopefully we could do this again, Sifu. We okay. We do uh, an, an, another type of interview, probably not. Focus solely on on just Thai G, probably on something else as well. Okay, okay, uh, very good. Hey, thank you very, thank you very much for your time, Shifu. And this was a great interview. And I hope you have a very good rest of your day. Okay, Shifu. you too. Yeah. Okay, right. bye. Thank you, Shifu. Right. Bye bye. Bye. That was great. That was great.